I'm Maxis. Swip it up right back cause I'm slapstick. Piss off laughing, you inelastic. Wife calling me out to make ceramic gala. AKA, five years old, give me an AKA. It's order up, I'm making steak. Hop in the pot, time for a fan bay. Blue to the flames, throw the champagne. End of the line, you take my last name. I'm his own Danix, he's pomegranate. Who doesn't have a depressed parent? Kirk Hammond, take the seed, take my hands with the sheets. I'm stepping through elephants in the room. I'm awake, bitch. How are you? I'm gonna take you through exactly how I go through a day at the museum. First thing I always take to a museum is a notebook like this. This one I've painted myself. It is a notebook that does have the fish icon on it. I have a EP that is six songs that are tied to the six icons in a Salvador Dali painting. The fish is tied to my song, I Like Me, I Don't Like You. And I, and I am wearing the I Like Me, I Don't Like You collection. I like these two fish kissing. Actually, before even the notebook, before I even get to the museum, I like to do research on the artist first. I found that Cezanne was very stubborn and one-track minded and absolutist in his art making, and I like that. So I've, I've already started to warm up to the idea of Cezanne. Aesthetically, I'm sure after going to this exhibit, I will possibly appreciate his aesthetic more. After seeing a Modigliani exhibit a few years ago, I hated Modigliani going into the exhibit after it, I left with his style being one of my favorite styles. I hated the eyeless eyes, now I love it. So I am looking forward to having my perspective change on Cezanne. Once I get to the museum, I will open this up and I like to write in it this way. And so I like to write this way. I agree. Um, yeah. I love you a lot. Um, I want you to do so. What am I going to see you again? Boom is always on. There's something about an artist leaving behind their paint palettes that feels really poignant because it's almost like objects that were in action that got left behind. It's not like a sweater. You don't know the last time they wore their sweater, but Cezanne was using these every day, especially because he worked so much. We know that this glob of white paint was probably going to be used and it never got to be used. They feel like these active artifacts. That's why they're extra haunting. The museum guide was free today, and I'm always happy to get a museum guide, but it was a nice treat that it was free. This was my favorite painting I saw. At first I couldn't put my finger on why it looked strange, but then I realized the sky was black. And there's also shadows of the trees, so is it a light or a full moon? What is making that shadow? Apparently this was his wife, and other painters didn't really like his wife, but Cezanne painted her a lot, and he obviously loved her. I like this little blue star wallpaper. This is a painting that Monet owned for a long time. And it had something to do with this photo of a slave in an American newspaper that he painted. I would pause to read this. And this was a sketch or preliminary, draw preliminary drawing of a painting. I always like seeing these versus how the painting turned out. I like both. The Eternal Feminine is what it's called. This one was really interesting because it pictures a group of men gathered around a Cezanne painting. And this includes artists like Pierre Bonnard, who's one of my favorites. And this is the painting that they're gathered around. So it's really interesting to really feel like that painting was 
back then it makes it feel real how old it is. I thought this was really sweet. I, I believe this was painted in Momar. Momar, I don't know how to say it. I really like the blues in the sky in this one. And some of my favorite Cezannes are these bright blue sky ones. Not necessarily the fruits. However, I like the philosophy behind the fruits. Then I checked out a couple of my other favorite paintings. That's Klein Blue. He created a blue color. That's a Matisse. And then there was this Leonora Carrington that I forgot was here. I saw some of her work in this realist exhibit. If you don't know Leonora Carrington, Dorothea Tanning, and Remedios Vero, and you like surrealism, definitely make sure to check out all three of those artists. Uh, but Leonora Carrington, I believe she's British, and her work is fantastic. And then lastly, this, well, second to last, the Salvador Dali painting. That is a commentary on the Spanish Revolution. I think it's called Autumnal Cannibalism. And it's like two people eating each other, which is what happens in a civil war. Not revolution, the civil war. Spanish Civil War. And then this Magritte which I love, and it always astonishes me how every single square of it looks exactly the same, except the one with the man in it. I just got out of the Tate first thoughts. It's just exactly what I thought. My complete opinion on Cezanne has changed, more because it's not about the subject of what he even painted, but rather the philosophy behind. I love how he had the strictness of such few things that he painted, pear, apple, ginger, eggplant, tablecloth, in a controlled studio and setting. So it was more about the philosophy, the idea, the discipline, the spirit, the technique that came through. It wasn't about portraying what was in front of him, rather what was inside him because when you're seeing these same things, the monotony of the tablecloth and the simple life, when you're seeing these same things over and over again, but still you can have an inside that is stirring with a lot of emotion, philosophy, thoughts, and feelings. So it's getting that across in the, the, the subject of a monotonous daily in and out life. And I think that's what's so interesting it's not about what's in front of him but what's inside of him they're extremely introspective paintings and that's what i wasn't getting before until i came to this and i didn't get to finish the whole exhibit luckily the audio guide was free so i got to listen to that um, but i will be coming back to to see these again and the rest of them i'm very excited i think i'll come back on saturday i think i'll come back this weekend and it was fabulous and i walked out of the tape and it's dark outside and St. Paul's is lit up behind me and it's and it's quite amazing but yeah I'm so happy I went and my complete opinions changed and I found out that Rania Rilke was a friend observer someone who talked and wrote about and described Cezanne's work and he is one of my favorite philosophers so having that connection and I even got a book about that which I'll show you later so that's really exciting so now I'm going to go home as I walk over the Millennium Bridge, which is one of my favorite things to do in London. And I'm just really happy that I got to discover his work in this new way and have a new favorite kind of artist that I'm going to dive into. And as someone who is inspired by paintings that inspires music, it's very exciting to see how Cezanne was inspired by like a monotonous thing of daily life in and out to get across an inner turmoil and he was very staunch and stubborn and there's a letter between him and Camille Pissarro saying how he got rejected again it's no surprise and he had unfinished work there so he was constantly rejected but he never faltered in his belief in himself and his authority and defense of his art so that's what's so amazing about him and we you know they say you fall in love with people and I think that's what it is you fall in love with him through his art, not just, you're not just bamboozled by the paintings, rather you usurp his spirit when seeing them.
came home a couple of hour ago. I uh, came home a couple of hour ago, hours ago. I'm having some orange wine. I went to the exhibit thinking that my mind might be changed about Cezanne, and it was. This is the members guide that the Tate Modern gives you. I didn't get to finish the whole exhibit, so I will be going back. But I think the thing that really stuck out was how he used very few subjects and he obsessed over the apple, the pear, the tablecloth. When you have that same subject matter over and over again it creates this repetition and monotonousness and the the still life was a very low level kind of piece of art to do which gave him a lot of uh, freedom and mastery. So you might say it's the same stuff over and over, it's just a still life is still life, but just like when you're in a home, you have the same environment over and over and over again, but your emotions are turmoiling, life is going by, things are happening, your subconscious is rising and falling. And I think that's why he's a very philosophical painter and that's what I didn't get before this. And getting this book about Rilke talking about Cezanne I think is going to bring me a lot of enlightenment. This is a painting I did in July, and it was framed in that, but it fell off the wall.